Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and uh, I was, um, first of all, I want to apologize uh, if you follow uh, what I do here and you were looking for me, I was not here, um, I actually decided to take a week off, um, believe it or not, don't don't make fun of me, I might sound bougie, but I went to Hawaii, uh, which was nice, and uh, I joined my parents out there, my parents had their 40th wedding anniversary, and uh, my siblings and I bought them a trip to Hawaii as, as a gift, and you know, my mom was funny, my mama wanted to stay there for a whole month, so, uh, which cost us a billion dollars, but it was all good because, um, you know, 40 years of marriage, uh, you, you just really can't beat that. Uh, you have to have so much respect for people that have that kind of dedication. Uh, very few people do uh, in our society. I don't even think that kind of dedication is really taught. Um, and I learned a lot from watching how my parents fought through uh, each day of marriage. And they literally were like brother and sister. You know, I had the luxury of having that stability there, uh, which was very important because my father, who actually is not my biological father, uh, he taught me a lot of the fundamentals of manhood that I feel that uh, some young boys just don't get. Um, you know, my dad really taught me a lot about fighting through the things that uh, that you uh, may not be comfortable with. You know, you, you make a commitment, you stick to it, uh, you run into a tough situation, you stand up, even if you know you're going to get your ass kicked. Um, you know, just little things like that that I learned from my dad uh, that I really appreciate because he, he put the, the soldier inside of me. Uh, and so I just had to give that little tribute to my parents and just uh, say, you know, that I just am so grateful for everything that they have done. Now, here's what I want to dig into today. I want to talk about this for a quick second. Um, I, I'm an alumnus of, of the Ohio State University. You're supposed to say the Ohio State University. Um, and, uh, you, you know, I, I left uh, with my Ph.D., Right around the same time, Maurice Claret came into the school as a freshman. Maurice Claret, uh, if you are a fan of sports, uh, you have to basically, uh, if you're a fan of sports, you know how great this guy was. Um, he was, if you want to compare him on a high school level in terms of talent and ability, he was right there with LeBron James. In fact, uh, a lot of people would say that since Ohio, since uh, football is more uh, is a more popular sport in Ohio, uh, Maurice was considered uh, more popular than LeBron at that time. They were in high school around the same time, and uh, Maurice was was amazing. He was actually the first uh, freshman uh, running back to start at Ohio State in maybe twenty or thirty years, and he also was the the best running back that Ohio State had had in at least 30 years, maybe longer. He might have been the best ever, but he only played for one year, so it never really got a chance to pan out. Now, uh, just to say that, um, to give you a little bit of background in terms of what he accomplished, uh, Maurice, uh, you know, his freshman year, he he not only earned the starting position, but he was the best starter on the team. He ended up leading the team to a national championship. And in case you don't know, uh, college sports is big business. Uh, there's a reason why they put so much pressure on athletes and, and, and all this other stuff is because they're, they've got millions of dollars on the line. Um, uh, winning a, one national championship can be worth easily $20 million to a school, maybe more, uh, depending on how well they merchandise what they do. Ohio State is a football factory, and most of the athletes on which they earn this money happen to be African-American males. And, and, and it's a problematic system because coaches don't have much incentive to make sure athletes are well-educated and that their well-being is taken care of. They have a huge amount of incentive to win games and win championships. So that's why you'll see situations like you saw at the University of North Carolina where you had these guys coming through making millions and probably over a billion dollars for the school by now over over the years um, who weren't being adequately educated because when this impressionable 18 year old steps on campus they pretty much do what their coaches tell them because their coaches can kick get them kicked out of school so what happens is because the university does not give the coaches much incentive to get the athletes educated they don't incentivize education among the athletes they pretty much make it clear to them that academics is your second priority athletics is your top priority and with the pressure that comes with playing professional sports which that's really what the NCAA is it's, prof it's a professional sports league that calls itself amateur I mean it makes it more money than the NFL and the NBA all these other professional leagues it's professional uh, the only reason they call it amateur is because they don't pay their employees um, and so when you get that pressure of playing in a professional sports league it's difficult to also have a normal college experience and this is something I saw over 20 something years teaching at, uh, at major schools a University of Kentucky, Indiana University of the Ohio State University, and then eventually Syracuse. And I was also at the University of Rochester for a while, but they don't have a, they don't have any sports there, uh, which might be good for them. Um, now, uh, one of the things that I saw uh, with Maurice, which was interesting, I watched the ESPN documentary Thirty for Thirty uh, uh, about Maurice Maurice's life, which I highly recommend. Um, and one of the things that really impressed me when I saw this young man on the screen is I looked at him and I said, "Holy crap!" 
this guy is so smart. He is such a good person. You know, I mean, he he always had a smile. Uh, people loved him. He worked his butt off to be as good as he was. And he also was intelligent. I mean, he was using words that um, a lot of my PhD friends don't use. And I was like thinking to myself, this guy is thoughtful and intelligent. Um, he's no different from me. Not even, I don't even say different from me. The only If he is different from me, it's because he's smarter than I am. I mean, I, I'm a pretty smart guy. I got a lot of education. But uh, this brother, I, I, if I were to meet him on the street, I wouldn't say, oh, this is a dumb jock. I would say, wow, this is an intelligent black man. And in fact, years later, he ended up uh, cre- started, he ended up creating a blog. And everybody was so impressed that this athlete had so much, um, so many intelligent thoughts that they, uh, that they loved the blog. And so what that really made me reflect on was uh, you know I, I saw his story and, and in case you don't know the story he he took the team to the championship and then around the championship time there was a, an issue where his his friend got shot in the hood you know which unfortunate which is unfortunate a lot of people have, you have to really think carefully about the fact that so many of our young people are traumatized by a certain age because they have allowed the inner cities to decay so badly they've locked away all the fathers they've taken away the the jobs they've taken away the educational opportunities and they've replaced that with drugs and guns so now everywhere you go you got people slagging dope shooting each other up and then on top of that you've got music that's now glorifying uh this this genocidal uh behavior amongst young black men and i and that's one of the reasons why i have an issue with these big corporations marketing uh genocide celebrating genocide uh you know in nazi germany you wouldn't have corporations celebrating the jewish holocaust but that's exactly what record labels are doing when they celebrate the murders and deaths of young young black people uh now moving on um uh, he got into an issue with the university where uh, he says that they lied to him, and, and honestly, I believe him. He says that they he talked to them about getting a plane ticket to go home to his uh, friend's funeral after his friend got shot. And the university, he claims, didn't want to uh, uh, didn't want to kind of connect its national championship run with somebody being murdered in drug related violence. So they came back and said, "Sorry, you know, we can't send you home." Um, and, uh, and it was right around the championship, right around the time when they needed to use this kid to to get their $20 million, but they didn't want to fly him home to be with his family. So Maurice, again, being an intelligent, thoughtful man, I mean, I'm talking, I'm serious. I'm, when I look at him, I, when I see him at 18, I see a young Boyce Watkins, just maybe smarter than I was at that time. Um, and he had a national platform. And he went on television and told what happened. And so the athletic director, um, Andy Geiger, I think that's what this is asshole's name is excuse my french but this guy um you know he so he got he got upset and was lying to the public about why maurice didn't get his ticket and all this well he didn't fill out the forms and the paperwork when the fact is that they're they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars flying in the coaches families and flying in all these executives and flying in all these white guys these wealthy white guys to watch these niggas play on the field and i'm saying niggas because that's the way they look at us to watch all these black men play on the field where and, and earn money that's going to go in the hands of these rich white guys and their mothers are at home in the projects and, and some of them can barely afford to buy food it's 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 a sick disgusting system so this this andy geiger guy gets you know gets all upset and decides uh, later on basically he ends up slowly dismantling Maurice's uh, Maurice's career with these internal investigations about him be- getting side benefits and all these other things where they're trying to pretend like they're clean and pristine when the fact is that they're not. Um, most of these athletes get something on the side. The universities give them that because that's what they have to do to bring in these more. Mul- Think about this. You're bringing in multi-million dollar commodities that uh, you're, you're trying to get away with not paying them. Well, ultimately in economics, we study this and basically you can't have this kind of uh, um, situation exists where you're artificially suppressing wages uh, without having a black market emerge. So in this case, there is a huge black market. Top athletes do get little benefits, but it's still nothing compared to what they bring into the university. So I get very offended when somebody thinks that a kid should be going on television earning $50 million for a school or whatever, but yet they get upset because his mama got a $5,000 car as a side benefit. That, that's ch- that's That's just that's nothing compared to what that kid is worth Maurice Claret could have easily gotten 10 million dollars a year from the university and they still would have made a huge profit so so let's be clear about that so basically Maurice ends up not 
being able to play. Uh, he has two years where he's off the field. He's trying to go to the NFL. And let me tell you what happened there. He goes, he tries to go to the NFL. The NFL says, oh, sorry, we got a rule that says you have to be out of high school for three years. And it's for your protection. It, it reminds me of slavery back when they used to, there were literally people who felt that Negroes need to be enslaved because they needed to be protected, that they didn't know what to do with their own freedom. They would hurt themselves. They, they would, they, they just, they're just too stupid to know what to do with freedom. So a lot of people will argue that young black men shouldn't be compensated for their labor because they just don't know what to do with it. I mean, you know, you give the Negroes money, they're going to spend it on gold chains and rims and, and fancy cars and women, and they just won't know what to do with it. Well, what do you, I mean, white men spend their money on whatever they want. White men do what they want to do with their money. So why can't black men do the same thing? These administrators, these coaches that are getting millions and millions of dollars are, are doing whatever they want with their money, buying all kinds of stuff, Some of a lot of which they don't tell us, and nobody says a word. But for some reason, when it comes to young black men and young athletes, period, we somehow think that they're too stupid to know how to take care of their families like everybody else. And what makes it more difficult is that a lot of young brothers, they have that pressure of getting that phone call from their mother telling them that, baby, we can't pay the rent this month. So if you were just on national TV and your school's literally getting a million dollars a pop every time you go on television, and yet you can't even help your family, that is about the most emasculating experience that a man can go through. And so anyway, so they got, they took Maurice off the field. And uh, so he has two years where he's trying to go to the NFL. The NFL says no. When the fact is, NF, the NFL and the NCAA, they operate, uh, in, they, they, they're able to collude in ways that would be illegal in any other industry. Um, basically, uh, they 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 set up this system where you have to be in college for three years because the NFL uh, allows you to play in this farm system for three years so that you're well developed by the time you get to the league you're already well marketed they don't have to market you they don't have to teach you you've had a chance to practice for three years the NCAA is happy because they get three years of free labor so that's why it, it, it works that way so Maurice goes, goes to court tries to sue the NFL to get a chance to go in the league uh, which right there he's risking being blackballed uh, but he didn't you know he, he didn't win the lawsuit he, he they there's a, there are various reasons for this you should watch the documentary and during that time you can see where that's when his downward spiral kind of began uh, he was very frustrated uh, he had a lot of idle time um, he wasn't able to go and earn a living for his family like uh, like his coach can and like all these other people can and he was basically abandoned by the people that had used him to make 20 million dollars a couple years earlier so that's when Maurice got into um, alcohol consumption and and just and into elements and situations that uh, that were more connected to his environment uh, that were not healthy for his well-being and that's when I saw Maurice go from being a, what I would consider like I said a young Boyce Watkins in terms of his intelligence to becoming something else to really becoming a thug, to really becoming, uh, he said his nickname was Maurice the Beast. So he said he started to try to embody that because that was what the world, the label the world put on him. So the world told him, uh, Negro, you ain't nothing but a thug. So he embraced this thug mentality. Uh, it was also more, uh, I believe, a function of the, 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 the hurt that comes from marginalization. And I understand that I have gone through that. I remember uh, when I was trying to get my PhD and I remember being punished just for being black, being punished just for being an intelligent, outspoken black man and I remember being so mad I wanted to go into my dissertation advisor's office and jump across the desk and literally just beat him into the ground I was so mad and I didn't do it because I didn't want to get it, go to jail but I remember being that frustrated that upset and I think a lot of black men go through this where they are so mad that you know that that the world hates them just for who they are and what I try to tell brothers and I want brothers to understand this is that uh, understand this the world wants you dead from the time you're born the world is threatened by you no matter what especially if you're a big black man and you're very intelligent now, if you're a thug or, or if you're an idiot or if you bow your head and, and, and you emasculate yourself, then you're not a threat anymore. But when you when you speak uh, boldly, when you speak intelligently, when you speak honestly and forthright, forthrightly, you're going to have people that are going to respond negatively to that. So basically when – and Jim Brown had it right, and I love Jim Brown because Jim Brown's one of the few black men, uh, in, in real black men that we see in the public space who's not afraid to say what needs to be said. Uh, and that's why, again, Jim Brown, they did the same thing to Jim Brown that they're doing to Maurice Claret. And Jim Brown basically described it accurately. He said uh, the way Andy Geiger talked about Maurice Claret, the way he punished him was like a master punishing a slave. And so, uh, lo and behold, Maurice gets in these situations where he ends up in prison. He, he ends up in this just terrible scenario and where, you know, he did some things I don't think he would have done otherwise. Um, I don't think he would have done it if alcohol had not been involved. Uh, Malcolm X once, t once said, he said, the white man will sell you the liquor bottle so he can lock you up for being drunk. And that's why I tell brothers 
all the time. Like I know you see these these dumbass rappers out here throwing up the bottles and and getting high on Molly and doing all this other stuff. And I just tell them, please walk away from that because you, I can't tell you how many men are in prison right now for things that they did while they were high or while they were drunk. When you do this, what you're doing is you're taking your brain out of your head and you're handing it over to somebody else you're playing russian roulette with your life you're you're getting you're, you're putting yourself in a zone where you don't you're not responsible for your actions anymore you don't know what's going on you might do something in many cases that you never would have done had you been sober and that's why i tell brothers you got to walk away from that stuff because that stuff will get you in trouble if you don't believe me look at how many stories there are of athletes and i'm talking about athlete culture the athlete slash hip-hop culture it kind of overlaps unfortunately hip-hop culture this isn't real hip-hop culture real hip-hop culture is is chuck dkrs one uh d1 at, uh down in uh, uh new orleans uh immortal technique that's hip-hop culture this shit on the radio is not hip-hop culture this is a cor- these are corporations that are trying to brainwash you into thinking that you are a beast that you are animals that you that your job is to be thugged out drunk and high all the time to go out and, and do horrible things to women do horrible things to yourself and to just be a horrible person and to throw all your money away buying these worthless European brands, giving your money right back to white people, uh, even though black people ain't got no money hardly. I mean, compared to whites, um, and and it's 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 ignorant. It's 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 ignorance and it's brainwashing. So uh, anyway. Um, uh, where was I? I lost my train of thought a little bit. Uh, forgive me for this, because but I'm very passionate about this topic. So uh, anyway, to continue the the analysis that, that I did, you know, when I was watching the Maurice Correct thing, I really saw a brother who went from being here an intelligent black man. I've seen it a thousand times an intelligent black man with a lot of potential to being down here to being a, a walking stereotype, thugged out, uh, engaged in criminal behavior, uh, on his way to prison. And uh, and it bothers me because I think about a couple other guys I know who would have been scholars in any other uh, universe. They would have been lawyers, doctors, professors. They would have been, um, you know, un- great entrepreneurs. But something about that culture, the worst parts of athletic culture, the the smoking, drinking, womanizing, etc. Um, it, it it can eat away at your soul. I mean, it can put you in a situation where your life is so bad, where you you you're doing nothing every day except solving problems, and it drains you. It can wear you out because you're ta- you're solving if it, complex problems with no resources to do that. Um, you got three or four babies, mamas, four or five STDs, uh, a gun charge, uh, the probation officer trying to call you, a lick a lick or a weed addiction, uh, and you're and you're broke and you can't get a job. Well, what happens then at that point is that you will then become suicidal in many cases. You um, you may not necessarily commit suicide openly, but you will commit it slowly because, it, unfortunately, marginalization, uh, stress strain, that kind of pressure can cause a young person to engage in uh, behaviors that are self-destructive. And in many cases, uh, with young men, especially when they don't have fathers to really guide them in terms of how to make those good de- make decisions the right way, uh, it can only exacerbate itself because, unfortunately, a lot of brothers are not being taught sort of those those tools of manhood that you need to really fight your way out of a situation uh some brothers get caught up in the idea of feeling sorry for themselves and i can just say that that's just not a good strategy for almost any situation so uh when i think about maurice um i you know i saw his mother struggling to try to keep up with him trying to help him trying to love him the best way she could um i saw him go to prison i saw him learn and grow in prison which going to prison should not be uh what you have to do in order to uh become uh, an enlightened person that someone should not have to lock you up like a damn animal in order for you to realize who you truly are uh but you know, i'm really proud of maurice because now that that sports stuff is out of his system he he now has emerged as what appears to be a much better person he actually created a blog and was writing these amazing articles and poetry and all these other things that people loved and people got a chance to see that he was a human being and i think that's very important because a lot of people don't see black men as human beings they see black men as animals they see us as and when somebody sees you as an animal when somebody sees you as nothing but a thug what they do is they assume that you're like they look at you like they look at an animal when you think about killing chopping off a chicken's head at kfc you're not thinking about the pain that the chicken might go through the fact that the chicken's being taken away from his family or the or the other things that a chicken might go through you're just thinking i'm gonna chop this chicken's head off because he's just an animal he's not gonna feel it well when uh when you're running around and you're buying into this corporate idea that's being marketed to you that you're nothing but a thug when you walk around calling yourself a young thug or i ain't nothing but a young nigga or whatever well white people are observing this and they're getting this impression that well well i think he's a thug he thinks he's a thug 
I think his life is worthless. He thinks his life is worthless. So when Mike Brown runs into a police officer on the street, the cop says, boom, 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 I'm not shooting a human being, I'm killing a thug. So uh, what I will say is, uh, you know, brothers, you, you're not thugs. Um, uh, you know, don't let these situations stress you out and, and, and cause you to do things that are going to be unhealthy for yourself. Uh, don't follow the trends. Don't follow what everybody else is doing. Uh, never walk away from education. Um, you know, watch the Maurice Claret story on ESPN 30 for 30. Try to learn from that. I don't think what Maurice went through was really his fault. I think he was a young kid kind of going through it and learning as he went along. Um, uh, understand also that these institutions don't give a damn about you. Uh, they don't care. Um, in fact, I would say that sports has actually hurt black men more than it's helped us. We have one out of every thousand that gets a chance to go on and make a million dollars or whatever. But that other 999, unfortunately, a large percentage of those young men get sucked into a lifestyle that's just not healthy for them. It's not conducive for them to grow and develop into adequate husbands and fathers. Because it's hard to be a daddy when you got three or four babies, mamas, four or five STDs, an alcohol problem, uh, maybe a, a smoking weed problem, and you got no money because you've been balling out, throwing it up at the club and doing all these other stupid things that are taught to you in this culture. So um, I say, you know, to brothers, learn from these mistakes that you see in front of you. Uh, if you want to play sports, that's cool. Do it, uh, but apply the principles from sports to everything you do in life. The same way Maurice Claret was a hardworking athlete, um, he can also be a hardworking scholar, a hardworking father, a hardworking businessman, a hardworking human being. Apply that discipline to everything you do, and don't just turn it off when you step off the field. So again, um, I'm not saying any of this to diss Maurice Claret. Um, I actually feel more empathy for him than I, than I feel anything else, and I really feel that the university screwed him uh that's my alma mater but i'm quite ashamed of their behavior in this situation um i think it was bigotry i think it was hypocritical i think it was wrong and i think it was very hurtful to this man and his family uh he deserved a chance to play football uh but but beyond that though he's not just a football player sometimes athletes lose their athletic identity and they they then feel that they've lost themselves don't ever let a white man or anybody else tell you that you ain't nothing but an athlete you're meant to be so much more. You are meant to be more than just a football player or a basketball player. And I'll give you one last example, then I'm done. Uh, Vince Young. I remember Vince Young, who played for the Tennessee Titans. He played for the University of Texas. Similar situation to Maurice Claret. Went to college four years. University used him up. Won a championship. Got millions of dollars off of him. Only paid him a little bit or whatever. He goes to the NFL, and I remember I saw a cover on ESPN the magazine. This was when uh, this was when this this guy was at the top of his game. He was he was the man at the time, and he literally said something like, "I was born to play Texas, or I was born to play quarterback at the University of Texas." And at that point, I felt sorry for him because I said to myself, "I said, wow, this brother, his 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 whole existence has been collapsed to the one dimensional." framework that says I was born to do nothing but play quarterback at the University of Texas, a historically racist school that don't give a damn about black people and giving nothing to my community and it's pulling me away from the people I love. I'm born to serve these white people. That that's what I'm that's what I was reading there. And it's unfortunate because years and I said to myself, I said I hope this brother's career works out because if it doesn't, he's probably going to think about killing himself. And you look at Vince Young's career in the NFL, he did all the stereotypical things. He ran around, you know, threw his money up at the club, uh, wasted all his money, ran through about, you know, I want to say it was like $40, 50000000 million that he wasted. Uh, the, his NFL career did not go right. He ended up being suicidal. Because why? Because, well, when he lost his athletic identity, he had no identity. He didn't know he was any, he didn't know he was anything other than what the white man had told him that he was. And what I would say to that young black man is sports can be a very important part of who you are. That's fine. But understand that that's not all of who you are. Never allow your existence nor your self-esteem to be contingent upon what somebody else thinks about you especially your oppressor never ever do that too many black people judge ourselves by how much white people like us and there's no disrespect to white people no offense to white people but fuck that excuse my french you don't ever let anybody have access to your self-esteem or your dignity or your self-worth you need to be strong enough so that if they throw you out which unfortunately in many cases they will they threw me out they the white folks of syracuse didn't like me when i started speaking that radical stuff on tv they played every trick in the book but you know what because of, of things I heard from my father, things I heard from Jesse Jackson, things I was telling myself all along, I eventually realized I don't need these people to validate me for me to be somebody. I am somebody whether you like me or not. So when they came at me and they tried to play all these mind games and tell me I was inadequate and 
all this other stuff which wasn't true I said no F you you know what because you have a university where you went 100 years without hiring a single black person in my department you didn't hire one single black person and you're trying to say that something's wrong with me no something's wrong with you you're mentally ill and, and, and because you have this racism that's causing you to make these stupid irrational decisions you can't convince me that there's not a single black person on the planet who's not smart enough to have this job before I got here so I told them I said instead of analyzing me you need to understand you're not qualified to analyze me I am qualified to analyze you and my analysis of you is that you are screwed up now of course that got me fired I, I'm going to admit that but you know what I learned how to have my own business I kept my self esteem intact and I, I was healthier and more vibrant than ever freedom is hard but freedom is wonderful and when I walked out of there I walked out with my head high and you can't put a price tag on that you just can't so I say to black men be strong don't let these people define you define yourself you are great no matter what uh, commit yourself to what you want to be and don't let anybody play with your head because believe me if they know that your head if they know that, that your mind is idle if they know that your self esteem can be shaped by their behavior and their judgment of you they're going to play with your head all the way into the grave and, and that's just a fact well I'm done thank you for uh, listening to me talk I didn't mean to talk this long I really didn't but I just had to tell this story And uh, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World please take care God bless I'm gone peace